Hi, my name is PK Gulati. I'm the founder of The Assembly. If you're here, you're probably watching an assembly workshop. We do these workshops every week, and these are prepared by the assembly team in Dubai. These workshops cover ideas from data sciences, hardware design, automation, robotics, drones, and all the other exponential technologies that can, you can think about. The idea is for us to learn more than what curriculum teaches us. And we are trying to bring people to start working with their own hands with these technologies which have the capacity of changing the world. So welcome to this workshop and learn more about new wonders what you can build. Hi guys, my name is Aisha Afreen and welcome back to another workshop. So in this workshop, we'll be doing an interesting topic, which is personality prediction using Twitter account. So in this, uh, in the code, we'll be executing the personality prediction according to the Myers-Briggs uh, indicator uh, by inputting the account handle of the person, analyzing it through machine learning algorithm, and then predicting the personality. So let me start by introducing you to the assembly. The assembly is a smart lab that is based out of N5 since uh, December 2014. Over 250 free workshops have been done. So there are three types of workshops in the assembly. One is the hack, which is the embedded systems, IoT and hardware. The next is the code, which is the software projects, APIs, frameworks and apps. Then we have the data science, which is the advanced topics that are related to AI, machine learning and all. So our target audience uh, are the um, individuals that are here to learn and try new things. Um, you could be student, professional, entrepreneurs, anything. What we do uh, is focus on smart technology and practical applications. Uh, so the workshop that we're going to do here today is uh, going to be a data science workshop since it involves machine learning. You can visit our forum at uh, members.theassembly.ae. You can also tag us on our social media, we are there on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Okay, so before we start, uh, let's do an overview. So we'll be introducing over here uh, the Myers-Briggs and the categories that are present in the Myers-Briggs, as well as the aim of this workshop, as well as um, the Myers-Briggs personality indicator. We'll be talking about uh, the machine learning, Nave uh, based algorithm, what it is and how it works, as well as uh, what we're going to do and an overview of the workshop and the steps present in them. So the Myers-Briggs personality type indicator is a self-report um, inventory which is designed to identify a person's personality type, strengths and preferences. The questionnaire which was, it was developed by Isabel Myers and her mother Catherine Briggs and today this MBTI inventory is one of the most widely used psychological instruments in the world. Next, we have the categories in Myers-Briggs. Uh, this test, it attempts to assign four categories, which is introversion or extroversion, sensing or intuition, thinking or feeling, judging or perceiving. So each person is said to have one preferred quality from each of these four categories, so which will produce 16 unique types of personalities. So this is an image of um, all the 16 personalities. So in each of these, we'll be taking the first letter of uh, each. Suppose if it's ISTJ, then it'll be introversion, uh, sensing, uh, thinking, as well as uh, judging. So that is the personality type of that person. So in this way, we'll be predicting the person's personality type. And the aim of this workshop, as well as of this Myers-Briggs um, inventory is that the uh, it will allow respondents to further explore and understand their own personalities, uh, including the likes, dislikes, strengths, weaknesses, possible career preferences, and compatibility with other people. So this is also uh, widely used for CV analysis and so many other um, psychological uses. So what is machine learning? Machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence and computer science, which focuses on the use of data and algorithm to imitate the way that humans learn, gradually improving its accuracy. There are three types of machine learning, that is supervised machine learning, uh, unsupervised, as well as reinforcement learning. Now, uh, over here, we'll be using the naive based algorithm in this um, machine learning uh, code. So what is naive base? So it is basically a classification technique which is based on the Bayes theorem. 
uh, with an assumption of independence among their predicators. So what this means is that like um, a naive base classifier assumes that the persons of a particular feature in a class is unrelated to the presence of any other feature. For example, if a fruit is maybe maybe an apple and if it is red, round and three inches in diameter, we assume it to be as an apple. Even if these features, they depend on each other or upon the existence of the other features, all these properties are independently, independently contribute to the probability that this is a fruit and this fruit is an apple, uh, which is why it is called as naive. Naive means independent. Okay, so we'll be moving on to the coding part of the workshop now. So I'll be importing a few modules. So over here we'll be using the CSV module to deal with the CSV files, the array modules, the array module to um, create arrays and uh, dealing with the arrays. The pandas is for dealing with data frames. Pickling is a process in which we convert the Python object structures into a byte stream. Over here the pickle module will help in serializing and uh, deserializing the Python object structures. And then we've imported the OS and the system module to work with the operating systems and system. As well as the NumPy is for working with functions of the array or uh, it is also used for Fourier transform or matrices. Now the sklearn or the scikit-learn uh, module is uh, a very good module which is um, used for many machine learning and statistical modeling uh, algorithms and it is for, used for classification, regression, clustering and dimensionality reduction. Now we've uh, imported uh, a module like feature extraction. This is used for extracting the features in a format that is supported by uh, machine learning algorithms from datasets. And uh, over here we've imported it in the form of a text. Now we've also uh, imported count vectorizer and tfidf vectorizer from the sklearn um, module. So the count vectorizer, what it does, it is used to transform a given text into a vector on the basis of the frequency um, or the count of each word that occurs in the entire text. As well as the tfidf vectorizer, it is uh, used to tokenize the documents, learn the vocabulary and inverse, inverse the document frequency weightings. And it will also allow you to encode uh, new documents. And since we're over here we are using the NaveBase algorithm, we've imported the NaveBase uh, module from the scikit-learn. Okay, uh, so now uh, we will be uh, trying to read the files that are there. So we have uh, five files over here. So one is the new frequency file, uh, which has a bit of uh, like a lot of uh, data on the Myers-Briggs personality, as well as we have one file for the introversion and the extrovert uh, this thing. So it'll uh, analyze some of the uh, pre-processed uh, text and then it'll uh, say whether one is for if it is um, introvert or extrovert like that. Another file, the PJ final test file is for the perseverance or perceiving or judging. The S and N final test file is for sensing and intuition. And the next one is the TNF is for the thinking or the feeling. So now uh, we will be in, uh, reading the first file, which is the new frequency 300 file. So we'll give a variable name CSV file and uh, we'll be uh, reading it in the text mode. So that's why we have uh, written RT. Then we will use the CSV uh, module to read this. So that's why we're using the CSV module and we'll uh, try to use the reader function to read the CSV file. That we've just opened. After that, we'll try to uh, sort it into a dictionary, which name we have, uh, whose name we have given as my dict. So it's going to read every row, and then we it'll in CSV reader, and uh, it'll try to keep it inside a dictionary. Now, if you want, we can just pin this to see what it looks like. So this is how they've made. So there's like these are the key values and that's this thing so now okay so this is the the uh, my dictionary file so now we will be uh, using the uh, tf idf vectorizer over here we'll be putting this vectorizer and uh, so vocabulary is basically for uh, mapping we'll put my dict into that and the min we have, which is like a cutoff we've put that as one 
So now we'll try to uh, fit this uh, vectorizer into the corpus. We'll try to fit that into another variable called x. Transform. We'll be um, changing this into an array. So the corpus file dot two array. Next, we'll be using the uh, numpy, which is np, to append the into the result. So x comma y. Then we'll be using the pandas module to create a data frame the result. And now since uh, we're using the Gaussian uh, nave base module, uh, we'll be putting that also now. And we need to create a training and a testing sample. So we train, so we'll put the fraction as this thing and a random state. In random state, it doesn't change the data. It's like a random number that you just give because for the order of this thing, that's it. It doesn't affect the data at all. Next, we make a test file. Now we'll be making another Y train. So, which is the Y train module. So, we're putting it into the Y train and the test module, we'll be putting it into the Y test. Now, if you want, we can uh, try and print this out so you can see what the train. So now uh, I have uh, tried to print the train and test uh, uh, files. So this is the training files and this is its shape or the number of rows and columns in it. Now Y train, so this is Y train and Y test. Now um, after this, we will be trying to put x train x train which is the dropping freeze of one and also another x test we'll be making now we'll try to fit this model into model uh, we have put a model as gaussian nave based model so now we'll try to fit this into the x train and y train then we'll use the pickle module to create another file and open this model in another file called bnpg final dot sav and we'll give it in a writing binary mode then we will delete the result so now when we try to print this so it's got printed now uh, after this we have to do the same, uh, all the same processes that we've done till now for all the other files. That is the SN file, the TF uh, file, the PJ file. I mean, we just did the PJ file and the IE final test file. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, I have uh, done. I've copy pasted the same thing for the IE uh, final test file, as well as for the uh, TF final test file, as well as the last file, which is the SN final test file. So, and I've also printed. Uh, the train shape and the test shape so that is this just to see if it is working so now all the pre-processing thing has finished now uh, we will move on to the Twitter file bringing the, Twi the TweetPy uh, API as well as working on the Twitter account so that we can get the personality prediction okay so now uh, after we've done all this uh, Pre-processing and the nave based classification. We'll be going on to our uh, Twitter account uh, and the personality prediction from there. So first, we need to input a few modules for that. So import a few modules here. Okay, so here we will be using the NLTK uh, module, which is the Natural Language Toolkit. Uh, it is a platform used for building uh, Python programming that work with human language data uh, for applying in statistical natural uh, language processing. So we are use, we are going to import stop words which is to remove the unnecessary stop words as well as uh, word tokenizer to tokenize. So we'll be uh, also using the, we'll be importing the stem, uh, stem module which is uh, in which stemming is like a process for producing morphological uh, variants of a root or a base word. And TweetPy uh, API, it it'll, uh, it gives us access to so many uh, Twitter APIs, system, the OS, which we've already discussed. Okay, so the RE module is for the regular expression. 
uh, the Unidecode, uh, it'll turn the it'll turn the Unicode into ASCII characters. Uh, and now uh, we have a counter uh, a counter module as well that is used as a container for uh, keeping the count values of each uh, value. And now the ITER tools, uh, the ITER tools module. The iTools module is an inbuilt module that allows us to handle the iterations in a very efficient way. We also have downloaded punct which is uh, used for removing the punctuations. Now um, what we need is uh, we need a Twitter developer account to get the data uh, of Twitter from real time. So if uh, for those of you who uh, need the data, you need to uh, develop a Twitter developer account and you need to get the access key and uh, all the other keys so that you can uh, personally access the uh, data from Twitter. So I've already made a Twitter developer account. So I'm going to just uh, keep the access key as well as the data. Okay, so I'm going to type consumer key as C key and then so this is my Twitter developer account so I'm going to copy this uh, consumer key paste it here next we'll have uh, the secret key as well as we'll copy that as well and we'll place it there so it's important to get these keys otherwise you will not be able to access the data of the tweets in real time. Now for that we will regenerate the disk key and get the access token. I've already gotten the consumer key and the API key so I'll just copy paste that here and now uh, I need to authenticate the account so for that I'll give a variable authent both and with the TweetPy module, I will access the auth handler function and give this a consumer key as well as the secret a consumer secret key. And after that, I'll try to give access to it. So And in this, uh, I'll have to give the access, uh, access keys, which is the secret key as well as the token. Now, uh, as the API, I'll use the FreePy module and use up into it. Okay, so now uh, we've done the authentication part. So now uh, we need to pre-process the emoticons and all the other like hashtags and other unwanted uh, important data. So now uh, I will, so this is for the emoticons and all. So you will uh, notice some peculi peculiarities that are not captured by the general purpose English tokenizer as a single token. So for that reason, we are going to uh, pre-process this and tokenize them so this is the hashtag and uh, the emoticons now after this okay so next uh, we will be uh, using the regular expression module so that we can uh, tokenize that giving a variable tokens re we will try to compile so this is uh, we are putting R as so R. Okay, so we'll be using the join and regex str. Okay, so uh, now we'll be putting two flags, which is the verbos as well as the re ignore case. So, Okay, so the regular expression, uh, they are compiled uh, with the flags re.verbos to allow the spaces in the re regular expression to be ignored as well as uh, re.ignore case to catch both upper and lower case. Okay, so now we'll uh, compile again using emoticon re and re.ignore. 
compile these are R and plus sign and emoticons uh, underscore str and plus dollar sign and again we'll be using the flags re verbos re verbos and i ignore case so now uh, we need to define a function tokenize so for that sign tokenize giving will return tokens re dot pinter so what findle does here is it'll find all the matches and return it as a string again we'll be defining another other uh, function which we'll name as preprocess so this is all part of the preprocessing functions now give the tokens as tokenize function we'll give that okay so if look is tokens so tokens if emoticon sorry dot search which will search for the matches and else we will give token dot lower for token uh, then we will return the tokens Okay, now we have to do one more function which is which we'll name as prepro. This is also a pre-processing function. Now we will use the a uni decode module which I explained before. So after using the uh, uni decode, now we will put a variable as post tagger and use the function preprocess on it next um, we will use the tweet variable and put. then we'll use the join function again for the post tagger post tagger then now we need to get the stop words so for the stop words we will set and use the stop words module and words function and we'll get english and we need to tokenize the words so words token and word tokenize and then we'll be using tweet now we need to create an empty list which is filtered sentence for w in post tagger we will if w not in stop words we will append the filtered sentence with the w then we need another empty list which for the stemmed sentences now uh, we'll try to initiate uh, a variable does stammer2 will give and we'll give snowball uh, stammer so snowball stammer is an algorithm of that is used very widely for stemming and we'll give the variable as english which is the linguistic subclass and we will ignore the stop words we don't want the stop words to be stemmed and we'll give that as true now we will do a we will put a for loop in filtered sentence after this we will try to append the stem sentence and we will give the stem function for the stemmer2 so that it can stem stemmer2 variable and so now we have done that now we need to uh, strip all the punctuation marks so for that we will give temp and then we'll give space we'll give the join function and inside that we'll give c for c in stemmed sentence if c not in string dot 
it's punctuation. So this is because we don't want punctuation. So now after this, we will try to pre-process the pre-processed pre-processed variable we'll put temp and we'll try to split we'll use a split function so the split basically uh, it uh, makes the array back into the list and we'll give a list called final which is an empty list give a for loop for i in the pre-processed variable and uh, another for loop if i not in final if it is not in final and if i dot is digit so is digit is a function that will check whether it's a digit or not and then we will pass function else if it isn't uh, a digit else if https we don't want HTTPS, okay, we'll just put HTTP and not in I. And after that, we'll try to append the I to final. Okay. So now uh, we'll try to join the temp. So temp1, we'll use the join function and put C for C in final. So now we are joining and then we will return temp1. Okay, so now what we need to do is uh, we need to get the, we need to do a function to get the tweets from the user. So that's what we are going to do now. We're going to write a function which is def and we'll give the function name as uh, get tweets user and we'll try to open the CSV file and we'll try to open the user.csv in the append mode and we'll give new line equal to uh, space okay then we'll try to read and write to the function uh, we'll try to write to the csv file so csv dot we'll use the csv library dot writer and csv file then we'll use a try method so in try we will give for loop for i in range 0 comma 4 and uh, after this we will try so for uh, tweets We'll put the variable name as tweets and tweets dot api user user timeline so we'll use this api and give the screen name as user then we'll give the count as a thousand and include Uh, include RTS we'll give that as true and page I now we'll give another for loop for status in tweets and we'll give TW is equal to We'll use the prepack function that we defined before and we'll do status.text. And then if tw dot we will put if tw dot find so the find function will find all the matches and return them in the form of a string is equal to equal to minus one that means if it didn't find anything then we'll keep that as blank then we will put it as a csv writer it 
center dot right row use the function and we will write the tw to csv writer next we will try to use the accept since it is a try block uh, accept tweepy dot tweep tweep error okay we will write print uh, failed to run the command on that user and we'll write skipping so this is when there's an error and to this we'll just close the csv file since we don't need it anymore now we'll close the csv file and now after this uh, we need to input the user's handle so uh, we will put username equal to input uh, please please enter the twitter account handle and now after that we will uh, try to get the username so we'll put get tweets we'll call the function get tweets and put the username now we will try to uh, open the csv user csv file again so with open user.csv and we'll try to open it in the read text mode so user.csv and uh, then we will after that we'll try to read this so for reading we'll use the csv reader csv reader equal to csv dot reader function reader of f then we will type tweet list since we want to create a list of the rows uh, row zero for rows in csv reader after this we'll uh, try to open another file which is the file new frequency 300.csv which we've already used in for nave base so uh, new frequency 300.csv and um, we will open it in the same read and uh, text mode as f now after this we will again read this so csv reader the same csv reader equal to csv dot reader function of f and we will Oh, we'll create another variable which is my dict and which is a dictionary and we'll put rows one int uh, row int rows zero for rows in csv reader now uh, we will try to vectorize the same thing so to vectorize we will uh, use the vectorizer equal to tfidf and the variables vocabulary equal to will give the dictionary name which is my dict and minimum cutoff which is one we'll give it as that and we'll give x equal to vectorizer we'll try to fit this and put tweet list we'll give it in the form of an array next we'll try to put a data frame using the pandas so data frame of x yeah now uh, we are going to open the pickle file and we're going to load it so we're going to write model ie pickle dot load 
and we have saved the pickle file as the NIE final dot sav. We'll open it in the read and binary form. So that is why RB. Okay, so I'm just going to copy paste the same thing now. Uh, so we've done this for SN file, TF file, as well as the PJ file. And now we will create a list called empty list, which is answers. And now uh, we need to uh, predict the answers in this, which is the Gaussian. Uh, we want the Gaussian to work on this. So for that, we use the predict function. So model IE dot predict and of the data we'll put the data frame okay so now i will be uh, i'll just copy paste the same thing since it's the same thing so we've done the same predict model for each of the files which is sn a tf pj now after this we are going to put a variable called b and we put counter as I, I told before, counter is a function that is like a container and it will add all the extra values. And now uh, we'll type okay, value b dot most common. So we will and we'll put one and then we'll try to print the value. And if if the value is suppose the first the value zero zero is equal to equal to one point zero, then we will append it answer dot append of s we'll put s. so this s is for the personality type of sensing else we'll append the answer as n so now i've just copy pasted the same uh, program the same uh, uh, definition for all the categories which is for introvert extrovert and for the rest of the other categories, which is thinking, feeling, perceiving, and judging. And then after that, we will just join the answer and print the MBTI. Okay, so now let's uh, run the code and see if it works. Okay, so now they asked us to give the account handle. So we will give uh, Cristiano and press enter and then we will see whether yes so we have infp as this thing so infp is his myers-briggs personality type which is introvert uh, intuition feeling and uh, perceiving so i think so the reason this has come is because maybe uh, like it's according to his tweets like the way he's tweeted the way he has um, done everything uh, all his tweets might be in a, in the form of an introvert personality that's showing his introvert personality. So whatever uh, is, uh, so this is a very um, useful kind of um, application. You can use it for many things. You can use it for many fields. Like if you want to analyze the person or if you don't know the person or even in like uh, for psychology or even for CV analysis, anything. So many things you can, there are so many applications based on this. So I hope you uh, liked it and enjoyed it. Please do try it out and thank you for watching our video. If you found our video interesting, please do like, share and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos. Uh, if you want to stay connected to us, we are there on Instagram, Facebook as well as Twitter. Please do follow us over there. Thank you.